Russia is playing a dominant role in the war in Syria. With the evacuation of Aleppo underway, President Putin's turning his attention to a political settlement. But he's sidelining both the UN and the US. What's his game and what does he hope to gain? This is Inside Story. Welcome to the program. I'm Darin Abu Gaida. It's been a stop-go situation in Aleppo. That's as thousands of Syrians, both civilians and rebel fighters, are still waiting to get out as government forces strengthen their grip on the city. It's a chaotic process and has already been halted several times. Activists say government forces opened fire on convoy trucks on Friday, but the government is making the same accusation. It's saying the rebels opened fire on them. Well, Syria's ally, Russia, is playing a major role in that operation. Its soldiers are in control of checkpoints along the route out of eastern Aleppo. Now, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, says that he's trying to organize peace talks on Syria, possibly to be held in Kazakhstan. Turkey would be involved, but significantly, both the UN and the US would be excluded. During a telephone conversation with President Erdogan, we agreed we will propose to the sides of the conflict to continue peace negotiations in a new place, and the Kazakh capital, Astana, could be such a place. If it happens, it won't be competing with Geneva, it will be in addition to the Geneva talks. In any case, no matter where the warring parties meet, I think it will be the right thing to do, and we need to aspire to political settlement. Well, Turkey's foreign minister, Mevlet Kasuvoglu, says the human cost for the people of Aleppo has made the separate peace talks a necessity. Unfortunately, while these efforts were being made, the situation has become worse, and the ceasefire in Aleppo was not achieved. Unfortunately, civilians, women and children have been bombed, as well as hospitals. We have been observing the levels of violence in Aleppo for six years. 600,000 people have been murdered. We couldn't stay silent, and we've had to save many people. Well, Moscow has been resolute in its support of Syria's President Bashar al-Assad. Let's just take a look at why Russia is so interested in maintaining the government. Now, Moscow has long-standing ties with Assad's government and that of his predecessor. It's Russia's main remaining sphere of influence within the region. And in order to retain its foothold in the Middle East, Moscow would undoubtedly prefer a stable Assad government to a potentially unstable democratic one. Now, Syria provides an important military and strategic asset for Russia. It allowed a Russian naval base at Tartus for the past four decades. Syria's bloody war has put that asset at risk at times. And although Syria is not a vital trading partner for Russia, it does buy a lot of weapons. Russian arms exports to Syria between 2008 to 2012 totaled about $1.1 billion. Let's now get the thoughts of our guests. Joining us here in Doha, we have Marwan Qabalan. He's a Syria analyst and the head of policy analysis of the Arab Center at the Doha Institute for Graduate Studies. In Istanbul, Metin Gurjan, an independent military analyst and also a columnist with Al Monitor. In Moscow, Pavel Felgenhauer, a defense analyst. Welcome uh, to all of you. Marwan Qabalan, if I may start with you. There's something to be said about the timing uh, for this push for a political settlement by Vladimir Putin, saying that... Uh, it's time for diplomacy and it's time for a negotiated settlement uh, as the Aleppo ceasefire is underway. Why now? Well, I think now because I think President Putin, I believe, has made his point clear by managing over the past actually few months, not only in um, uh, preventing the overthrow of the regime of uh, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, a key objective of his military intervention in Syria, but also in defeating the opposition also. And uh, behind the opposition, of course, I mean the West, which has been trying to overthrow Bashar al-Assad over the past few years. I think President Putin was using Syria in order to get the respect that he was actually trying to get from the West, because the West dealt with him actually in a very disrespectful way in Ukraine, for example, when the West imposed sanctions on Russia and treated Russia very much like a third world country. Uh, but you do agree that there have been far-reaching relations uh, dating back uh, many, many years between the Russians and the Syrians. That is true, but that is not the key issue 
issue, in my opinion, for President Putin, because the relationship between Syria and Russia was very much neglected after the end of the Cold War, and Syria was no longer actually a very important ally for Russia. I think it has to do very much with the post-Arab Spring revolutions. I mean, this is where actually President Putin decided to take a tough stand on, on Syria, because number one, he felt like he was betrayed and dece de deceived by the West in Libya, when resolutions, UN resolutions were used actually to overthrow the regime of, of, Li of uh, Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi, uh, wherein he thought the resolutions would be used actually to protect only civilians. And uh, Russia lost billions of dollars of deals, actually, trade deals and uh, military uh, deals with, with Libya. Uh, he wanted actually to use Syria as a bargaining chip with the West concerning Ukraine, which is much, much more important than Syria for him. And I think he wanted to, to prove that he, Russia is an international power that everybody must deal with it in a very respectful way. And I think he made that clear, in my opinion, over the past few months, I mean, since he made this military intervention in Syria. So all of these factors, in my opinion, has, has more to do with, with Putin's uh, own motives not with the conflict in Syria and not with anything else. In Moscow, Pavel Falkenhauer, do you agree that uh, Putin's motives have to do with his own uh, sort of personal agenda, as my guest in Doha seems to suggest? To some extent, yes, that's true, but there are more important things involved. Russia has invested enormous amounts of resources, and not only prestige, into Syria. It was re recently a top Russian general uh, announced that Russia, ha from the beginning of the campaign, in, a, uh, in, in the end of September 15, had shipped to Syria 700,000 tons of e equipment, of uh, uh, weapons, of munitions and other supplies. It's more than 2,000 tons a day. This, he said it's the right name, the Syrian Express. So this is enormous investment. This is not just to change a chip for something. Russia wants to maintain absolutely Syria as a foothold of its influence in the Middle East, expand the Russian presence in Syria dramatically, Instead of one naval small facility, that will be expanded to the full naval base with apparently permanent naval presence. And also the air base near Latakia will be maintained and expanded. And even more importantly, Russia wants to show the other important powers in the Middle East that relying on the United States is futile, that those who rely on the United States lose, those who rely on Russia win. So Russia wants to form based on its victory in Syria, a large Middle Eastern coalition where it will be the kind of uh, man on top, bridging interests between countries like Egypt and uh, Turkey, who don't like each other, Israel and Iran, which are both right now more or less Russian allies. To, or at least we have, Russia has wonderful relations with, between with them, but they don't talk to each other. So that makes Russia indispensable uh, in a, a broad coalition in the Middle East. Uh, Metin uh, Gurjan in Turkey, uh, let me just turn your attention to the uh, possible negotiated settlement that might take place, as we understand, in Kazakhstan when it comes to Syria. This is according to the Russian President Vladimir Putin. He's saying that he will be holding these meetings alongside Turkey, where you talk to us from. First, is there something to be said about the location of these talks when it comes to Kazakhstan, really in the heart of Central Asia, in Russia's sphere of influence and close to Turkey? Turkey has been trying to mediate, you know, uh, to uh, decrease already existing uh, tension and uh, diffuse the uncertainty and unpredictability, ambiguity right now on the ground. And Kazakhstan is an important uh, country for Turkey. If you remember, Kazakhstan was the country who has been uh, uh, playing active role in the recent rapprochement between uh, Russia and Turkey. But, uh, ma'am, I have to start with a general analysis. You know, in late uh, 2011, when the war broke out in Syria, we had only one war. You know, Assad forces representing the central authority against uh, rebels. But right now, how many wars do we have in Syria? I mean, right now, the problem at hand is swarming of this one war into multiple uh, wars uh, being fought at different levels. 
at the global level, I think this is a very dangerous trend. We see an armed uh, confrontation between Russia and United States in Syria via proxies. And at the uh, regional level, we see a sort of sectarian war uh, between Iran-led uh, militias and uh, in Syria and also Turkey and so, uh, Gulf countries-led uh, Sunni militias in Syria. And at the national level, we have already ongoing fights between uh, rebels and Assad forces. And at the local level, uh, more than 200 groups uh, from different ethnic, sectarian and religious you know, factions, they are fighting with one another. So we have many wars being fought currently in Syria. So, so I think in a sort of top-down uh, top fashion, we have to decrease this already existing uh, ambiguity and unpredictability by clearly, uh, you know, setting the stage. Who, uh, two actors is gonna, are gonna set the stage? United States and Russia. So I think the relationship between United States and Russia is extremely important to diffuse this, you know, existing uh, ambiguity in Syria. We have to start in a sort of top-down fashion. First, the United States and Russia should come uh, together and should start uh, cooperation. I think, and also Turkey can play a, a mediator role in this uh, negotiation. Here's the thing though, Marwan Kabalan, the US is effectively being shut out of any potential talks when it comes to Kazakhstan. Uh, the Russian President Vladimir Putin not including the US nor, uh, nor the United Nations in these talks. And we also learned that the United States was shut out when it came to any talks uh, that brought together this Aleppo ceasefire uh, that is happening underway. Well, I'm not very surprised to be, I mean, to be frank, because the United States has never actually made it, uh, they, have all, uh, they have made it clear all the way since the beginning of this conflict that they don't have vested interest, they don't have huge interest in Syria. This is why uh, when your guest from Moscow talked about strategic uh, uh, Russian interest in Syria, I would say that none of these could have been achieved by Russia had the United States been really interested in uh, the changing the situation in Syria. But the United States was from the very beginning backing off uh, and trying not to do uh, anything, even when uh, anything serious to, br to, to, bring, uh, to bring down the regime. So you seem to agree Bashar with what Pavel Assad. from Moscow mm -hmm. uh, has said, where he says that Russia has basically filled a gap uh, that's that was very left true. By the yeah, United that's very States. true. That's very true. But if, when we compare to Syria, for example, to Iraq, Iraq was also an important uh, Russian ally during the Cold War. But Russia couldn't do anything actually to prevent the U.S. war on Iraq. Why? Because the United States was uh, the United States approach at that time was very much uh, different. They, they 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 insisted actually on bringing down the regime of Saddam Hussein, and they had huge interest in Iraq, whereas in Syria they did not have that interest. This is why actually Russia managed actually to get in and to fill that vacuum and to achieve the interest uh, Babel, I mean, talked, Mr. Babel talked about uh, 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 earlier. But I think for Turkey, uh, uh, the argument of your guest from Turkey is, is, a, is, is being used for me as an excuse for Turkey to change its, posi its position, position from being a pro uh, opposition into becoming a mediator between Russia on the one hand and the Syrian opposition on the other hand. I think the two countries, in my opinion, they made this deal, Turkey and Russia. The two countries will be trying actually to lean on their own allies uh, in Syria, the Syrian opposition for Turkey and the Syrian regime for Russia, and try to work out something uh, a, a political solution to this to this crisis. Uh, I think uh, here at this point, I think the Americans, as I said before, they don't have real uh, uh, real influence on either side of this equation on one hand, and they don't see themselves very much interested actually in getting very much involved into this conflict. Uh, Metin, it's, was it's Turkey different. backed different. into a corner? We've seen a real shift in Turkey's foreign policy when it comes to Syria from the start of the war up until today. We are very familiar with uh, President Erdogan's swift U-turns, you know. He has a sort of pragmatist stance, you know, and also he proved this stance in several occasions. So I think after the uh, full, uh, you know, control uh, that the Assad forces established in Aleppo, I think the debate will revolve around the legitimacy of Assad government uh, throughout Syria. And I think, uh, you know, uh, the Turkey and particularly President Erdogan will have a uh, swift U-turn. Uh, you know, uh, I think he will renounce his rhetoric of Assad must go. And then 
he, we will see, I'm expecting much more cooperation between Ankara and Damascus, both uh, for the future of Syria, particularly the future of Aleppo and also north of uh, Syria. Right now, after the you know capture of Aleppo, uh, you know Turkey has an ongoing operation in the north of Syria. We call Euphrates Shield. I think uh, both uh, Turkey and Syria, I mean, uh, should cooperate more uh, to coordinate things on the ground. So. Uh, I'm expecting that uh, if you turn from Ankara. What does Russia, Pavel, what does Russia get out of this strategic alliance, it seems, with not only Turkey, uh, but Iran as well? Well, they said Russia wants to form a kind of grand Middle Eastern co coalition where it will be uh, the main kind of coordinator. And it's very important to balance and such a, because Russia, of course, is not the Soviet Union, it's much smaller and weaker, to balance uh, Iran against Turkey, to balance different members. So Russia has good relations with Iran, but with Iran, they will also have, from time to time, lots of tension. And right now, there's a problem, a very serious practical military problem in Syria. Russia does not have reliable infantry at all. The Russian contingent is small, mostly Air Force. Now, of course, they moved into Aleppo some military police units, which are actually Sunni Muslims, specially formed, mostly Chechen, but also some Muslims from other parts of Russia. And that's apparently an agreement with Turkey that these uh, soldiers are going to man the checkpoints. Uh, the idea is that they, they will prevent uh, possibly some outrages by Shia militias, because Russia wants to balance the uh, sectarian part of it and be kind of uh, good with all and be the man on top. Uh, and so the agreement with Turkey, which Russia hopes can influence some parts of the Syrian opposition after they have been humiliated and militarily smashed in Aleppo, that they can agree to join the Assad government in some reformed form, something like the Chechen Kadyrovtsi that uh, were recruited to be pro-Russian, or like in Iraq when the Americans worked with the Sunni tribes, the so-called awakening. And for that, Russia needs Turkish influence, its influence with parts of the opposition, to make that thing work out. So after Aleppo, Putin hopes that this uh, uh, Kazakh possible without the United States and UN get together will begin the formation of a kind of awakening force, Sunni force, inside Syria, together with Turkey. What about the ISIL component? I mean, there's a lot of talk about uh, Russia, uh, Pavel, wanting to sort of extend its sphere of influence and maintain what influence it may have at this point. But there, there is a, still an ISIL component that is very crucial uh, to their involvement, perhaps, in Syria, isn't there? Oh, of course, and that's been the official kind of ideological reason for the Russian invasion and what the Russian public is told, that there are you know, che bad Chechens, there are other people, uh, volunteers from other parts of Russia, they're with ISIS, we should uh, kill them before they return or there'll be a problem. So uh, the uh, ideological uh, command to fight ISIS is going to be there after and when if there is a sound kind of consolidation of the Russian position in uh, the western, uh, the uh, habitable part of Syria, there can be a move against ISIS too. And of course, most likely right now, there could be uh, just soon a move against ISIS in Palmyra to push them out again. All right, Marwan. Well, I think this is perhaps this is the deal where, uh, because we, we, were, we were talking uh, earlier about the United States being shut out of the talks that are going to take place in Asitana in, in Kazakhstan. But I think that the, 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 the issue is like, is like this, that the Russians and the Turks will take care of this political solution between opposition, moderate opposition and regime on the one hand, but the part which concerns the United States more, actually, is the ISIL fight. This right. is where the Russians, in my opinion, will be trying actually to work out some sort of agreement with the Americans because they are going to use ISIL, in my opinion, in order to have this rapprochement between with, with the Trump administration because Trump actually he said it uh, earlier that his major concern actually is to fight ISIL and he will be relying on some sort of cooperation with Russia. I think President Putin will be using that element in order to have that sort of rapprochement with the United States, whereas opposition and regime will be a different issue dealt by between 
Russia and Turkey. But for Trump himself, it's a good thing that you brought him up because he said that he wants to broadly uh, pull back from any sort of U.S. engagement in the Middle East. So how do you see that yeah, going forward when he, I mean, this when is he takes the presidency? Yeah, this is in fact a translation because when the United States actually is shut out of the talks now between the, between the regime and the opposition, this is a translation of the sort of disengagement, the U.S. disengagement from the Syrian uh, conflict. But we will see increased involvement with the fight against ISIL. That is, gonna, that is where gonna, we are going to see this rapprochement between Russia and the United States concerning the issue. Uh, Metin, the fact that the U.S. and the U.N. have been shut out of these talks, as we're saying, does this mean that the Geneva process is completely dead if you read between the lines? I think so. But, you know, uh, another important point maybe we should concentrate uh, is ISIS uh, from previous, you know, debate is uh, still an effective war machine in Syria. It's not only a war machine, it's a mentality. So we need a sort of clearly cut a bombing and talking strategy for ISIS. You know, we know who are going to bomb ISIS, but who are going to uh, engage with those, you know, Sunni factions, structures who felt themselves alienated in Syria? Who can play that mediator role, I think, is still an unanswered uh, question. Another important dynamic, you know, the post-conflict reconstruction phase, you know, in the city of Aleppo right now, we need that uh, post-conflict reconstruction process, both in uh, material terms, you know, to, to get rid of this physical, you know, uh, destruction that uh, caused by the conflict and also in uh, cognitive terms, you know, uh, who is, uh, which sort of actors are gonna uh, play to win the hearts and minds of those, you know, people living in Aleppo. That's why we need a sort of both hard and soft approaches in the fight against ISIS in uh, Syria. And again, uh, right now, uh, Assad's, uh, you know, legitimacy will be the main issue, I think, who, uh, which will be discussed in the post-Aleppo uh, setting. But uh, I think uh, all actors, including United States and Russia, regional actors, Iran, Turkey, they are all trying to reposition themselves for a sort of post-ISIS setting. And they are trying to prioritize their interest. I think uh, there should be a sort of platform, as I said before, the relationship between Russia and the United States is extremely important to create this atmosphere, this uh, constructive atmosphere. Right, for hang the on a second. Of, Let me cross uh, over Syria. to uh, Pavel. And, has the uh, issue of Assad's legitimacy, Pavel, it's an issue that Metin just uh, raised, has yes. the issue of uh, Assad's legi legitimacy been uh, sort of uh, taken away? Uh, by the Russians because it's not really being discussed and I'll tell you uh, why a senior uh, Syrian opposition leader Riyad Hijab who I'm sure you know of he's been commenting on these negotiations that could take place in Kazakhstan and uh, he said that he his uh, committee was willing to join peace talks planned by Putin uh, provided that the aim was to set up a transition government but uh, in no way did he say uh, Assad must step down a condition that previously he had talked about well, that is important also personally for President Vladimir Putin, uh, who believed that the West is kind of uh, destroying regimes and leaders they don't want. And it was Slobodan Milosevic, Saddam Hussein, uh, Muammar Gaddafi. Now they went after Assad, and maybe next they'll go after him, Vladimir Putin. So it's important for him uh, for that not to happen. To set an example to other Middle Eastern leaders, kings, sheikhs, and presidents, that if you rely on Russia, you'll keep your job and you'll be safe. So, the, and of course, for Russia, uh, in the long term, it's very important to keep the present mostly Alevite uh, Syrian uh, military intelligence uh, uh, elite in place, which are uh, Russian connected, speak many of them speak Russian because they were educated in Moscow military academies and so keep uh, Syria connected and uh, that's so for, and for Russia so it's very important to have Assad there right. and apparently right now Russia has succeeded very much in keeping him for the time being okay I think there is, here's there is 10 a, seconds there is a different perspective I think keeping Sheikh's leaders and kings in power while killing tens of thousands of their own people uh, I think that is a very bad prescription for people in the Middle East, because this is something for many people is quite immoral 
uh, if uh, President Putin want to, to to make certain points clear for for the people of, of the region because you are killing people and after that you are saying look I'm going to give you this sweet after I kill you I mean that is a very weak morally argument I'll have to leave it uh, there at that point thank you very much uh, for joining us Marwan Qabalan here in Doha Metin Gurjan and Pavel Falgenhauer thank you very much and thank you for watching you can see the program again anytime by visiting our website aljazeera.com for further discussion you can go to our Facebook page that's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story you can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story for myself and the whole team here in Doha. Goodbye for now.